welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you guys how I use onion skins to dye some paper. So if you guys want to um, join me, I'll show you guys some tips and kind of my process. Okay, so first thing I do is I add some onion skins to my pot. And I usually kind of just hang on to them from my onions. When I buy onions and use them for cooking, I have a little bin that I just add my onion skins to just for this purpose. Okay, so first thing I do is I just add my onion skins to my pot and I try to make it kind of in a smaller pot so that it's more concentrated so that I can have, like if I added this to a huge pot and filled it with water, then the liquid would be less concentrated. So then I try to use a smaller pot Okay, so next thing I do is add some water. So I just add some water on top. Okay, so I just filled the pot up with water. And now I'm just going to add that to my um, burger and let it boil and simmer for a little bit. Okay, so here I chose a few papers that I want to dye um, with the onion skins. I'm assuming it'll give it a slightly yellowish orange tint. I've done it before, so that's kind of what um, usually comes out. So I just chose a few things because I don't want to make too much. Um, I chose a few index cards. I chose these digitals. These black and white digitals are from my um, Etsy shop. And I'm going to show you guys. Um, these are great for journaling. Okay, so these black and white digitals, I like to print them out first because um, they seem to work better that way. My uh, printer is, I think it's a laser printer. And so what I'm going to do is, so basically I'm just going to dye these um, to add some color to them. And I think it's kind of fun to see how they turn out. I have that one. Then I have some black and white um, tags with songs. And actually, these ones are the verse ones. I have another one with the songs. But and I have the tags. And it's printed on uh, pretty lightweight paper. And what I do, um, especially with the tags, I actually glue them on thicker cardstock. Um, but I like to print them on just regular paper and then um, tea dye them or coffee dye them. And then I'll make them thicker later with either cardstock or even, um, even like a piece of chipboard, I guess. You can do it if you want something thicker. Anyway, so um, here are some quotes that I love. And then some more labels. So yeah, so I'm going to, um, so yeah, I'm going to basically just, and this is just some basic paper here. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, hand dye these and see how they come out. So I use this glass dish for my paper, um, and I basically pour in my um, dye in here, and then I put the paper on top, and obviously um, if you're going to be eating or using it in the kitchen, you want to keep that separate from something you do uh, for your junk journaling, especially if you use like inks and dyes or whatever. But anyways, if you use food grade like like coffee, tea, and onion skins, um, or avocado dyeing, I think that's probably fine. But anyway, so here's my paper, and one of the things I like to do is use some cardboard. This piece of cardboard is actually a huge piece, and it actually, I, fold, I folded it in three because um, it's easier to store that way. But when I need to, I'll open it up and I can dry all my papers on it. And I'll turn on a fan to help that out. And here I have a cardboard piece on my kitchen table. My kitchen's fairly small, but 
um, I'll use this and lay everything out and um, it's kind of a mess right now because I kind of go through if I if I have too many papers and I'll layer them I'll go through like within an hour or so and I'll split them up so they don't stick or I'll turn them over and mix them up so that they dry because um, sometimes I just make a bunch at the, at the same time so um, let's see so yeah so this is kind of nice because if I need my kitchen table because we need to eat or something I can just pick this up and move it you know to the bar or to the you know to, to a different area so this actually just works really well for me um, and it's basically just like a huge cardboard piece like you can see this one here um, it's I would pick them up from Costco basically they separate pallets with these you know with either cardboard or just like this is really just like a piece of a thinner cardboard and so they separate them or it's like a liner between the pallets so a lot of times they'll just toss them out and even at a grocery store you can ask them if they have cardboard and so um, I found these really helpful and you can see look all that um, I think this all that pink is from when I used um, tissue paper or crepe paper to dye my paper anyway so um, it's nice because you don't get water going everywhere it kind of soaks up the water and so um, so that's what I use it makes it really helpful for me Okay, so here I am actually just straining the onion skins. And I had just used the seed for some avocado dyeing, so it's not like perfectly clean. But I don't mind, I think that's going to be fine. Okay, so here's the water from the onion skin. And I am going to, it's a nice color. Like, look at that. It's, so I'm going to add my paper. It's still pretty hot and steamy. So yeah, be careful. Don't do what I'm doing. My kids think it's funny when I tell them that. Okay, so um, I always like to use my hands when, um, when I'm dyeing paper. Like I hate wearing gloves. But then my hands are always stained. At least any time I do this, they get pretty stained. So um, I don't know. Do you guys have that problem? Um, and if you guys do, what do you guys use? I mean, is there something that you guys use for cleaning all the... Um, I mean, I clean my hands, but sometimes they're just like <laughs> pink or brown. Um so anyways, if you guys have tips on how to, you know, get the dye out of your skin, that would be great because um, sometimes I'll want to do a video soon after and I'm like, I can't because my, my hands are so dyed. Um, I have to wait. And then, of course, I'll do some more paper dyeing. And so then, um, yeah, please comment below and let me know what you guys use. Um... So yeah, that would be cool because I'm sure, I'm thinking that if I'm thinking about that, maybe other people are thinking the same thing. Um, and I was also thinking I got to go to church and my hands are going to be all stained. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I kind of like this color. I think it'll be really nice in a journal. Um, I'm really curious to see how much of the color it takes and... Sometimes I'll just leave it in here for like an hour or so, and sometimes I'll leave it all day or overnight. So right now I might just, I don't know, maybe I'll leave it just um, all day for, um, it's kind of afternoon. I'm going to look at it and see how much color it takes, and we'll see how it looks. So see how I like that color. So... 
so yeah, I'd love to hear your comments below, and um, I'd love to hear what your guys' results are, or tips. That'll be super helpful. Anyways, um, so there's some more paper. And... This blue always seems to kind of, um, my index cards, they kind of bleed. And so I'm just going to have them face each other. We'll see how that goes. So I'm just going to have them face each other so I can see how that works. And I have some more note papers. Okay, so I'm going to leave them like that for a little bit and um, hopefully till the evening and I will show you guys the next step that I do. Okay, so here's how it's looking now. It's been sitting here for maybe four or five hours and it's taking a pretty bright yellow color. So let's see if it focuses. Um, okay, there we go. Well, anyway, so what, what I'm going to do... It's kind of having trouble focusing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull the paper out and lay it out on here. Let's see if I could do it one-handed. Oh, I don't have... Okay, so what I like to do is um, I don't grab one at a time because they get fragile when they're wet. But if I grab like half of it, I'll just let it kind of drain a little bit. And then, so I let it drain just a little bit. And then I'm just going to set it on here. And so I got, um, I'm going to turn my fan on. And as these kind of dry, um, I just keep separating them. So as they'll dry, I'll separate them in half again like this. Um, I just found that this works better for me. So I'll just keep separating them as they dry or I'll pull pieces off and I'm going to move them here. Anyway, so this is kind of, I'm going to be cleaning this up. I didn't get a chance to clean it up, but I'm going to put all that dry paper away. And as I... Um, peel these apart as they kind of dry. I'm going to move them and spread them all out onto this other cardboard piece so that they uh, dry faster. But um, I find that it's easier to just pull them out like this um, where I am actually grabbing a whole stack. Um, because if I go one by one, they tend to tear. But if, and anyways, this is just like really more time efficient for me. And look at that color. It's so yellow. Um, I think that's going to be really pretty. Let's see if I have some white so we can see the difference between. Okay, so here's the difference in color. The white, it's wet now. So as it dries, it might not be as bright, but I actually like this. It's almost like a mustardy yellow. That's so pretty. So anyways, I leave these here. I kind of do this like in between my kitchen, um, my cooking and, you know, cleaning up the kitchen. I'll do this and then I'll go and cook or clean. And then like after I finish with my cooking, I'll come back and I'll peel some and spread them out some more so that way it kind of um it's kind of like in between uh what i have to do so um i will show you guys what these look like once they're dry or maybe when they dry just a little bit i'll show you guys how i remove them and spread them out over here okay so here's the paper and i want to show you guys how basically um like I had a huge stack here and I took um, I took it and I'm spreading it out like this 
So as it dries, I keep um, splitting up the stack. Now, I don't necessarily pull it all apart because um, I find it easier and simpler to just maybe do half of it at a time and then just lay it out. And as it dries, it kind of gets stronger because, well, like this one's, I have just one. But anyways, I don't want it to break. It's super fragile, and um, I don't want to bother with having to be super, super gentle with it. I just want to, um, this is just the way I do it. I just want to go really quick. So here's this one. So I just want to go really quick and um, lay them out. So then throughout the day, I do this. And then by um, when evening comes, I usually have them um, completely um, kind of pulled apart. So um, this one's not too bad, actually. So basically, and I'll even um, layer them like this sometimes if I don't have enough room because um, they'll still dry. The edges usually dry first. I'll put this napkin here so you can see the difference between the white and the color. So yeah, I'm actually really liking this yellow color. I feel like it's so bright and vibrant. Um, so anyways, I will keep, uh, I'll probably just leave these like this for now and um, let them dry a little bit and maybe in an hour I'll, I'll pull them all apart. Okay, so what I did was separate them a little bit more. So they're kind of doubled up so far, but as you can see, it's pretty full here. I'm actually going to take these to my crafting um, area. But, so I have room for one more here. So um, probably before I go to bed, I'll split these up a little bit more. And... Um, and let them uh, completely dry overnight. So, okay, so here is all my paper laid out. I laid them out last night so they dry and see how I kind of have them overlap like that. Um, so now they're all dry. Okay, so here is the yellow paper and I wanna show you guys the difference. It's almost like a mustardy yellow. It took the color really well. And so this is, um, I really like the color. So yeah, it, this is just again with the onion skin. I think it turned out fairly good. 